Welcome back to Midwest Long Range and today we've got something really new really cool to show you if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook you know I've had it for a minute and I've been playing with it some so stay tuned you're not gonna want to miss it all right folks here it is after a long long wait for all of you and for me, even longer for me, I promise, you just don't know. Here is a converted custom Curtis action. This is the Curtis Scout with a 22 long rifle conversion. It does have the rimfire bolt installed and functional. We're up and running. So let's get down into the nitty gritty of this build. What did we use? Like I said, we have the Curtis Scout action. I did go with their least expensive action, the Scout on this one. This is the new one they come out with. I wanted to show the more economical side of this. Now, I do have access to a uh, vector that we will look at later on in a different uh, video, but for today, this is what we're doing. So we started with the Curtis Scout action. I did order this with a 223 fa bolt face bolt uh, and with the 22 conversion, the rimfire conversion. Now, a key point of this build, we added the WTO, West Texas Ordnance, switch lug to it. This is their Axiom switch lug. It is compatible with this action. I had to discuss all of this with WTO and with Chase Curtis. Uh, he, he and I were both at Precision Rifle Expo last year. There's some videos on my channel you can go back and watch. And uh, the conversations I had with him and his team this is a compatible system and as i can prove here it does work and it works well from there i sent the action and the recoil lug to kenny i down at desert precision gunworks he spun up this amazing muller works 1 in 16 twist 8 groove minimal invasive barrel that's a spec so in order to change that i have to take the bolt out because kenny did not do a cone breach so much like some of the other builds that are out there he and i talked about this and I, I agreed with him he felt very strongly that cutting extractor grooves much like a voodoo type breach would be much more appropriate and promote a more dependable system and i agreed 100 percent. so that's what he did i'll show some images of all of that as we're going through here um, he laser engraved an index line on the barrel for me also he was kind enough to put some reminders on there. 30 inch pound torque, T25 bit. This setup is great. It's 24 inch long barrel um, done with his, uh, <clears throat> with his crown, but we are shooting it in the Manners TCS stock. This is one of my all time favorites. I bought this stock used. No, it was not provided folks. Uh, I bought it off a friend in North Carolina. Buddy, you know who you are. Thank you so much again. Um, I have two of these. One came out of Kentucky, one out of North Carolina. The Voodoo's in one, this one's in the other. I love these things. This one is the one with the Sykes rail. Um, this will be my competition setup going into the new seasons. Um, with that, you know, we have the Gray Ops barricade stop. We have AccuTac bipod. This amazing Hawkins Precision one-piece mount. I love these mounts. Uh, they're great. Also running my Apex Rival 4 to 32. Uh, do shoot on their uh, shooting team, as everybody probably knows by now. Um, but then on top of that, this gun is a little different compared to my past builds. I've always ran single stage triggers in my competition setups. Um, I do have a couple of two stage triggers. Uh, they are in my Ruger Precision and my Tika T1X. Well, I talked to the folks at Timony. They were kind enough to send me over a two-stage trigger for this build. I'm going to run that. Uh, we've, me and my son have already run this gun in one match. Uh, running the two-stage trigger uh, for myself, it did not hinder me, not one bit. Um, it took a little getting used to, but for my son, this was a great learning tool. Being able to get on that trigger, bring it back to an index, and know what the next thing to happen is, that was awesome. So guys, that's the build. Um, I will preface this and put a key point in here. There is that plastic part I will show you uh, that goes up into the mag well to effectively convert this so that you have ejection of the spent round when you pull the bolt back. 
that part straight from Curtis did not fit into my magwell and receiver uh, or into the uh, action through the magwell of my TCS or my MDT ACC Elite. Or, and I tried this with several stocks, several chassis, okay? There were a few it would fit with, but the ones I wanted to use it with, it did not. So I had to do some hand fitting and some sanding and uh, just filing to get that to fit in there. So I just want to let everybody know up front, there was fitting required, okay? These are essentially the race cars of the gun world. And when that happens, when you're getting into these high-end builds, Ooh, there is one. going to be fitting required. I've said in past videos, and I'm going to say it again, you do not get to just buy this stuff, pull it out of a box, stick it together, and Whoa. everything just work lights out. It takes work. You have to tune Ooh, those mags. You have to tune that plate. You have to check your torques. Go through the work, guys. So I'm just letting you know up front, you're not just going to slam this thing together, and it's not just going to shoot lights out. not going to happen. You're going to have to put in the work. But this gun shoots, and it shoots well. Let's get it on the range, see how it does. Had one come outside. That's either me or wind, probably. Now, in all fairness, I have done like zero lot testing, okay? This is the lot of SK Long Range maps that I shoot in my Voodoo all the time. It's quite literally about all I had. Um, and it seems to shoot well in this rifle also. The dope lined up really well. I didn't even get dope on this before I shot that last match. Uh, me and my son shot it straight out of the Kestrel, right off the Voodoo dope. And we had impacts all the way out to 400 yards. So I'm not saying it's lights out with it or whatever, but it's it not doing bad. And considering I'm trying to get this done before this storm rolls in, one flyer, I'm not going to condemn anything over that right now. Here we go, another one. I will say, okay, in all honesty, this is a very new setup. Uh, probably got, between Kenny and myself, it's probably got a brick of ammo run to it right now. Um, I haven't cleaned it since I got it, so I don't know when it's going to carbon ring up. Uh, I'm going to push it and see, see kind of what that is. I want to know where that cutoff is. But uh, compared to my Voodoo, the bolt is a little heavier on open and a little different. It's a little rougher when running, but, but it's so marginal. Okay, guys, I want you to, to kind of keep that in mind here. Whoa! Got one outside. I didn't feel nothing on that one, so maybe that was a flyer. I'm I'm not 100% sure there. Um, that was uh, that was a little different. So, hmm, maybe we'll shoot. Uh, might shoot two more right here at 52. One thing that probably deserves mentioning: we're just shooting some uh, partial boxes I had left over from the match. Uh, they've been in my uh, bag and in my truck for a couple of weeks. I don't think that would make any difference, but just uh, something to be aware of. Here we go. That ain't bad. I'm going to the middle. All right, guys, there it is. Uh, we got five, well, really six, five shot groups on paper. Um, is it just blistering and, you know, cutting ragged little holes? Well, no, but I haven't put in the work yet. You know, what I'm seeing here, even with just a random lot of 
ammo throw thrown off in it it's not shooting bad i mean we got some pretty decent groups um we got a few flyers there's no doubt but we are trying to beat a storm in here uh i don't know if you heard in other parts of the video there was some rain and uh, we got some wind kind of moving around i'm trying to wait and shoot in the gaps when thing or things are static but uh doesn't always work out that way all right folks what thinks he needs to shoot these uh, vegetables out of his mom's vegetable garden that ain't no good. No, the garden's fine, but uh, had a couple of bad ones, so here we go. There's one. Did you miss it? No, I hit it. Oh, okay. From here, I, th I just thought it would blow it up. Oh, I smoked him. I don't know if I get the other part. Oh, I'm taking chunks of him off. Let me get that part of that cucumber, the nip. Oh! I hate the cardboard piece. All right, folks. So there it is. The first showing of my Curtis Custom Rimfire Conversion setup. Now, given some of y'all may say I didn't put a ton of effort into this today. I just had one lot of ammo to shoot. That's all I had with me. I've had some people asking about the build. And I've had a lot of things going on privately uh, to where I just haven't been making uh, as many videos here recently as I would have in the past. Um, hopefully as the weather cools off and things slow down for me in my personal life just a little bit, we'll, uh, we'll get back to this and you know we'll get back to filming on a more regular basis. And we'll give this rifle all the love and attention that it deserves we'll get uh, some more lots of ammo in here to test with it and we'll shoot it out at distance and really put it through its paces we will do a from match to match setup with it on center fire and rim fire i do have a barrel uh krieger barrel that kenny spun up for it uh 223 full bore reamer uh we're probably going to try some tack class or maybe just even open class with it. I'm not sure what we're going to do just yet. Uh, may even take it and try to smoke a few coyotes. Who knows? Um, so that's the build. That's the video for today. The first look at the Curtis. I know this one's kind of quick, down and dirty, and uh, we'll continue to look at it closer as time goes on. So guys, stay safe. Keep shooting. Come back and see me next time right here, Midwest Long Range.